If you release a game in a broken, unplayable, buggy, shoddily crafted, or otherwise inexcusable state, and then over time you fix it, gradually bringing it to something resembling quality, you have done the necessary bare minimum in atonement and deserve no extra credit. This happens all the time with games now. Developers will release some rushed, crunchy trash that fails to live up to its own designs. People say, hey, this sucks, and you suck for producing it. But then eventually, as the problems get sorted out, not only do developers earn themselves back into the public's good graces, a lot of times they're better off than where they initially started. People will treat a developer who corrected past mistakes with more esteem than a developer who just always did things properly. There's nothing newsworthy about a game that launched fine. There are no heroes in that story. They did what was expected, beginning, middle, the end. A dev who crashes and burns, on the other hand, who came out of the gate stumbling into a ditch with its thumb up its ass, can draw initial ire, but then course correct, rehabilitate, update, and patch its way back into the limelight as a success story, and we fool ourselves into viewing that as a happy ending. But it's not a happy ending. It's a neutral one. You created problems and then solved them. Why should that elevate you higher than never having created problems? Games launching with no obvious major issues is a rare occurrence now among big titles. It feels like a miracle that things like Elden Ring and God of War Ragnarok managed to pull it off. Meanwhile, two games that launched on the same day, Pokemon Scarlet and Violet and the Dark Pictures anthology The Devil in Me, stepped up to the plate and whiffed every technological fastball hurled at them. Scarlet and Violet have horrendous performance issues that are persistent throughout, and The Devil in Me, from what I've seen, is just actually broken in every regard, like Assassin's Creed Unity levels of broken, which is almost impressive. I bring this up because the Nintendo of America Twitter account posted a blurb about the first upcoming post-launch Pokemon Scarlet and Violet patch, which includes some bug fixes, but according to the notes doesn't really do anything about the performance issues or mention all the Pokemon that spawn inside walls and under the floor. It's weird though because they specifically mention fixing the bug that makes the Elite Four music play a five second loop over and over instead of the actual theme, which I didn't know was a bug. I thought they composed that bullshit on purpose and I was like, lol, they were losing it. But then under that it just says, other select bug fixes have been made. So they specify that one, which makes me think nothing else substantial is happening this patch because they didn't find it important enough to talk about. However, in a note underneath that, they make sure to state this. We are aware that players may encounter issues that affect the game's performance. LOL, you mean the game itself? That's kind of the whole issue right there. Our goal is to always give players a positive experience with our games, and we apologize for the inconvenience. We take the feedback from players seriously and are working on improvements to the games. Yeah, you want to improve the game or remake it from the ground up for a different console. You'd be an engineering genius if you could take that shit to even 30 consistent FPS on Switch. But so people see a statement like this with a verbal commitment to repairing the game to something actually worth 60 bucks, and they react with almost the same enthusiasm as another Pokemon game being announced. People are in the replies like, HUGE in all caps, and just generally expressing heartfelt gratitude that someone would be kind enough to express a desire to clean up their own mess. Dude, if a guy walks up to you and spits in your face, but then promises to come back in like a month with a towel and wipe it off, is your response going to be, thank you, I can't wait? That's not a no harm done situation. You still got spit on, and you are still living with that spit. Because in this specific analogy, you don't have arms and can't wipe your face yourself. I don't think forgiveness is warranted when that forgiveness can also be enabling the behavior in the first place. If consumers actually had convictions on a mass scale and boycotted the things they said they were going to boycott and were able to mete out tangible punishment to developers slash publishers slash decision makers who failed in objectively terrible ways, we'd get better games. They wouldn't settle for an undercooked turkey of a video game if there was a real threat to their job security. Pokemon Scarlet and Violet broke Pokemon sales records for their first week, despite all this. Tell me who at the Pokemon company or Game Freak or whoever sees that and goes, oh, we need to fire the people responsible for this mess. Incompetence doesn't matter if the game still sells. Whichever people during development said, fuck optimization, we're not pushing the date back, get this game out on time, whatever it takes, are popping champagne bottles right now. Their game releasing more broken than any Pokemon game before it is still a success to them, because we all still bought it, and they're looking at comments thanking them for professing a general inclination to maybe fix some of its issues, and laughing all the way to the bank. Can you believe those idiots are grateful to us? They're fans, they don't have a choice. We could release the next Pokemon game on a blank sheet of paper and they'd still try to complete the Pokedex. They're a bunch of twerps. 
They have us by the balls and they know it. But so people will ask, well if people don't celebrate the fixing of bugs, then what motive is there for developers to even bother? And the answer to every game that isn't Pokemon is that people will stop playing it sooner, which is bad for anything with multiplayer, and they won't have any confidence in the next project the studio does. But it's also a bad philosophical foundation to begin with because it's not on us to make developers feel validated in doing, again, the absolute bare minimum that wasn't done initially. We respond with our time and our wallet. You don't need words of encouragement on Twitter to make you feel like correcting your mistakes is a worthwhile venture if you have any sense of integrity as a developer or even as a human being. You simply need to make it right for the sake of it being right. And people should regard you more positively for that than if you did nothing, but only because having a balanced, neutral opinion of someone is better than one that is strictly negative, which is where you'd be if you just said, eh, who cares, and left your last project in the mud hoping pigs will play with it. I'm saying don't treat developers who are breaking even by turning a negative into a positive as heroes for doing so. Don't say thank you, just say good.